Chapter 1 Overview Studying early childhood development is essential to becoming an effective teacher of young children. This chapter focuses on the definition of early childhood development within the larger context of human development. Important differences between quantitative and qualitative development are discussed and examples are provided. The rationale for a strong understanding of child development is presented. The critical connections between understanding how young children develop and the teacher's role in guiding interactions with children, planning and implementing curriculum, observing and identifying individual needs of children, appreciating diversity, and shaping child advocacy and public policy are discussed. Throughout this chapter, the critical need to study child development from a multicultural perspective is emphasized. The term minority is being replaced by terms such as children of traditionally underrepresented groups or children of color as a reflection of the changing demographics in the United States. Important distinctions are also made between developmental delays and cultural differences. This new terminology emphasizes a positive, positivist perspective and replaces the more negative deficit perspective. The important relationship between the understanding early childhood development from a multicultural perspective and the effective development of public policy and child advocacy is also, also presented. After reading Chapter 1, you should be able to answer these key questions. What is child development? How have Western views on early childhood development changed over the years? How have non-Western perspectives on child development differed from Western views? How can knowledge of early childhood development guide classroom interactions and cu curriculum planning? How can an understanding of early childhood development guide the observation and identification of children with disabilities? How can knowledge of early childhood development promote an understanding and appreciation of diversity? How can this knowledge guide advocacy and the shaping and the shaping of public policy. And lastly, why should professionals, professionals study child development from a multicultural perspective? There are also five critical concepts dis discussed during the chapter. Critical concept number one, development is defined as the process by which humans change as they grow older. This change is not just quantitative in nature. Humans do not just acquire more knowledge and ability, but change qualitatively as well. At each stage, human th humans think, behave, and perceive the world very differently. Critical concept number two, Western perspectives on child development, I mean on childhood, I mean, have changed throughout history. Historical accounts in Western society portray children as being treated poorly in early centuries, but cared for more compassionately in modern society. Critical concept number three. In spite of improvements in the treatment of children in the Western societies in recent times, services and educational opportunities are still not available to all children. Some children are, at, in, are in great need, even in modern America. Critical concept number four. Non-Western perspectives on child childhood are unique are unique because of history. Many of the beliefs about child, children and socialization practices of families in non-Western cultures are related to the experiences of slavery and oppression. And lastly, critical concept number five. Because the American population is becoming more diverse, it is important for professionals to study child development from a multicultural perspective. Children of different cultures vary in the ways they communicate and interact with adults and peers, in how they play and learn, and in how they view teachers and school. Parenting practices and beliefs vary across cultures as well.